and enjoy the session. Over to you, Tamri. So hi guys. Um, I think let me just demo the video. <laughs> so I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I will be handling uh, everything to do with. Uh, so my name is Swan Tamre. I am talking to you guys all the way from Nairobi. Um, it's it's such a pleasure for you guys to actually uh, show up. So uh, I think um, the people who've been trying to look at all the things to do with Android 11, um, I'm going to handle myself and Nani are going to handle everything to do with UI and within the world of UI within Android, over the last couple of years, we've seen that it has actually improved and it's actually grown really, really wide. And so the things you're going to cover are things to do with UI, um, graphics and media, and then public <laughs> visibility. And uh, to be specific, um, when we talk about the UI bits, the things that you're going to actually cover and talk about are things to do with uh, the window inserts. So all those things to do with how do you um, show like multi, like increased number of content within um, the, the things that can be played as we are going on. And then status navigation, IME, you know, all those things. And then we shall have actual examples that are really contextualized to us within an African setting. Um, yes, as much as people say, oh yeah, development is development, there are some certain considerations that we need to look at when you're developing specifically for um, for the African market or the African continent. And so everything to do with IME, uh, animation, stuff to do with keyboard, um, with app content changes, how do you listen for changes, how do you drive keyboard animation directly, you know, um, all, all of those things. And I'm just gonna show you like an actual example on how you can implement something like that myself and Amini. Um, the other thing is I think most of you have probably heard of it, which is bubbles and how do you use bubbles in a very contextualized form. If you're building your app and you need to use bubbles, um, that is like in form of notifications within your app. How do you use bubbles to actually present this? Um, the other bit is, and so we'll cover of things within that. Um, so the other bit that we'll also cover within bubbles, uh, no, sorry, after bubbles is, which I'll talk about all those things to do with also graphics and people who build games, the people with animation, especially within your Android application, you'd be interested in this one. Something that we're about is performance, and we shall touch on NDK image decoders. And we shall tell you something sweet about how, you know, previously we used to have like you'd build a JNI library and then you'd have that calling up so that it fixes within your Android code that is Java or Kotlin. And then you'd have all of these um, libraries that you have built and customized so that you can use. But now we have all these new decoders that are available from native code. So everything to do with JPEGs, your GIFs, your PNGs, and your web uh, PNGs yeah, images there. And so everything to do uh, with all that bit to with NDK image decoders, we shall cover that. Another bit that we shall cover is at Hive, where how do you load animated images from Hive files? So all those bits we shall talk about. If you have your animations, and then how do you put them there? Again, us being in Africa, the biggest thing that someone uses when they look at your application is the size of your application. So how do you uh, ensure that all of these drawable files are going to be read? Um, that um, is probably something that can be of interest uh, to, uh, to, 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 to many people is apart from the animated hives is we shall talk about all these things that have been deprecated within the NDK. Um, and I know those people who've been touching C++ and NDK and C++ for some time, you will either be sad or happy when we look at that session. Um, and so that's what we shall look at and cover that. Um, every fresh rates of your application, if you have your rendering loops, things like games, you know, um, we've heard of uh, this fascination with 60 frames per second. Um, so now we have devices that are going all the way to 120 hertz. And so how do you deal with screens that are that have those refresh rates? And so we will talk about all those things, enabling more reflect, uh, flexible back of rates, you know. Um, and so once we talk about all those things, um, the other bit is everything to do with performance. How do you make your applications, even if you're, you're playing around with your UIs and making all these amazing UIs, how do you make them to be really amazing? And so, yes, we shall also cover uh, as I said earlier, the keyboard, uh, how do you integrate? Like now you can actually integrate a keyboard that you actually uh, propagate for feeling information. And so, especially apps that deal with passwords, how can you do that? 
And so once we talk about all those things in, those, in the session that you're going to have, um, I believe the session that you're going to hold within that whole session is going to be everything now to do with the package, uh, not only the packages itself. How do you show this? How do you hide this other thing? And so the session that I'm going to actually hold is going to be done on 2nd of July, and I'm going to be doing it with me from Tanzania. And uh, that is has to and so I am looking forward to having you guys and we shall have this discussion on the UI. Um, and so I would like to put this over to Omolara in Nigeria. So Omolara, there you go. Hi, Frank. Good, um, good afternoon. And uh, okay, let me also do like to put on my video. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is Omolara and I'm coming from have everyone this call and um, a bit about uh, talking about um, talking about um, function changes and how we can get So um, one of the things that Google announced when um, we announced the year, one of the major changes around privacy changes, how um, how your um, access data, how your app um, so there are lots of changes around around this one because you know based on user feedback we got Google got that um, many people want to share less data every time they have the opportunity to. So Google has given users hundred users the chance the opportunity and the flexibility to um, Lara, sorry about that. Uh, there's a disturbance on your end. Sorry. Okay. Yes, <laughs> much better. Oh, okay. Um, Omolara, you are on mute. Is it better now? Yes, way better. Okay. Oh, let me just start all over again then, because I don't know. <laughs> all right. So, um, let me do a bit of a bit of recap. So, um, I'll be talking about the privacy changes but focusing more on permission changes and um, and, um, and foreground service types. So lots of the major changes that happened in Android 11 are around how developers access users' data and how um, you know, users can be more flexible because part of the feedback that, that was got from by Google was that users want to always have flexibility over how they share their, their data with some specific applications and all that. So Google has um, has added more restrictions in this area. So come 9th of July, I'll be talking more about how you can make your app, your app uh, more uh, compatible with Android 11, especially when it comes to permissions, how you can do a smooth uh, and seamless migration to Android 11, and also putting your users uh, feelings and um, I mean, part of the things we do as Android engineers is to be more empathic towards our users. So now, this is one of the of the ways where we can show our users that we care, right? So now, uh, taking us through how we can make sure that our app or our apps are uh, Android 11 ready and Android 11 compatible in terms of permission changes, what you need to do, especially when it comes to a requesting location. When it comes to requesting permission to camera and when it comes to requesting um, permission to microphones so also um there's a little bit of updates of foreground service types which uh, it's around how the kind of information you can get or apis you have access to in foreground so there are lots of um, you know um restrictions here and there so how be taking us on that night of july and if you really like to know more and how to actually if your app is is so um, reliant on location. This session is really going to be important so that you know how to make your app ready for the new Android 11. And I hope to see you there. So with that, um, in case you missed it, the session will be on 9th of July, which is about two weeks um, from today. It's the Thursday. So I'd like to see you there. So moving on, I'll be passing this button to Taracha will take us further into privacy changes. 
Mike, cool. Thank you, Moldara. Um, Mike, check. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Taracha, we can. All right, cool. So my name is Roger Taracha, uh, engineer, software engineer in Nairobi, Kenya. And I'll be presenting on scope storage. So I'll just give you a brief on what we'll be covering and um, especially for scoped storage. So scope storage was introduced in Android 10 and has been improved in Android 11 and it changes the way mobile apps access um, external storage on the, on the devices. And uh, this has been a pretty controversial change. Uh, as uh, top is, is top of mind for them. So um, what we'll be covering in this session is what scope storage is, uh, some of the key features and uh, release changes in Android to the implementation of um, we'll, we'll photo up and um, just see how the migration uh, will happen from an existing app, because I'm sure most of us have apps that we're working on or we've deployed before. And what does it mean uh, to migrate to scope storage successfully? Uh, we'll also cover some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to scoped storage. And also um, something interesting about special access, because the certifications that can be granted um, uh, complete access to storage. Uh, some, and um, the thing you need to keep in mind is uh, Google has to give you this access. So you have to apply and if not, um, application will be pulled down if you try to gain this uh, full access in your application. And um, we'll also get to share some resources and next steps when it comes to this migration. So key takeaways for today is um, you just need to keep in mind that scope storage introduces uh, important changes to the way Android apps work with files. And the important thing to keep in mind is we can't use uh, file APIs to directly access files anymore. Instead, we have to rely on the storage access framework for choosing files, folders, and the media store for media files. So I uh, will cover all that in my session. Um, my session will be happening on the 16th of July. Uh, 2020. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. Thanks for making time uh, to join today. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, we can hear you, Taraja. Ah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I'll just pass it on to uh, Smile next. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Taraja. Nice presentation. My name is Smile. Uh, I'm leading the session on uh, new Android 11 APIs. So Android has always been trying their best to make developers' lives easier we, uh, with how we access uh, device controls, how we also interact with the Android framework. Although earlier in earlier versions of Android, this has not been that easy. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, inconsistency in the game. Uh, Google has actually been doing a good job with that. I go from Android version uh, 5. A uh, lot of changes have been coming up. And now with Android 11, uh, I can promise you that there are some changes that allow you to actually write magical apps with the new API. So some of the APIs will be covering with So when navigation is actually solving the problems where uh, the use of uh, fragments were kind of uh, confusing when you're using a single activity navigation, it kind of solved that. But with that dynamic feature of those, uh, people actually hang back from, from using them. But uh, with uh, version 2.3, this has been uh, enabled. So you could actually, can you hear me? Yes, 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 smile okay. we can. All right, so um, 
with the dynamic feature modules now, you could reduce your initial download size with uh, navigation version 2.3, if you choose to shift to navigation version 2.3. As well, we'll be covering uh, some changes within the work manager as Android, as Google has added the diagnostics API, which lets you actually see, uh, go deeper into what your work manager is actually doing with uh, behind the scenes, as well as supporting non operation our foreground services. We have problems with it in previous Android versions, such as uh, Android 10, Android 9, but uh, we worked on, and uh, we have some nice updates there, and I'm sure you'd love to see that. As well, we'll be talking a little bit about WebKit. With the version 1.20, uh, Google will be kind enough to let us force dark mode. I know a lot of people like dark mode, as we yeah, I think that's something awesome. So with our WebKit version 1.20, if you are going to be displaying anything, so if not, so you can actually force a dark mode within your dark mode app. Then one thing that Google, I'm happy they really is a controller's provider service API. Uh, it does sound kind of long and confusing, but what this API really does for us is it allows us to take control of uh, external devices, such as uh, external Bluetooth, home speakers, your TV, your home theater, and uh, Google has been kind enough to add these APIs for us to use And uh, if you've been able to look at the Android 11 beta on your phones, you'll see that we have some nice nifty widgets on the uh, the notification bar where you could actually see these controls. And uh, as well, if you integrate this API, it makes it so easy for your users to interact with these external devices. So we'll do a little bit of a dive into that and show you how to integrate this into your apps. And without taking too much of your time, I would also be adding authentication types. So we know the different types of authentication within our direction, like uh, the face unlock, your biometrics, and as well the passwords. So now we've added, uh, Google has added new supports where you could actually choose how strong you want, uh, how strong of an authentication you'd like to turn to you, either strong or weak, depending on what physical hardware is available on the device. So you could use that to judge um, uh, uh, in unlocking your apps instead of actually implementing your own password. So we would also have a look at that. Uh, so the a few things we'll be looking at as uh, my session would be initiated assisted uh, with Hannah who will be joining me on that so I can't wait to meet you guys there. So let me hand over to Hannah. Um hello, hi. My name is Hannah. You can hear me, right? Yes, Hannah, we can. I'm good. Okay. Uh, so my session will be on data access auditing. And so basically, this is just a tool that will help developers understand where the permission access um, to private data is coming from. So for me, my session will just be giving an overview of how, connecting how um, on Molara's session on permission changes and um, Roger's session on storage, on scope storage. Um, we'll be connecting together with data access auditing. So for me, uh, in my session, I'll just be giving, walking you through a sample code that will help you see an instance of how you can preempt where data access will be requested from. And so this new feature comes with uh, two APIs, um, a callback and feature tagging. With you about the past control development, uh, some of the problem with the solution. Uh, we also will cover a, a few stories less about the platform. Uh, we will introduce the basic facts and the reasons behind the language tool, APIs and distribution. Basically, we will talk about four main topics, uh, tools, language, APIs, and the distribution. And so we will be talking uh, from Eclipse editor to Android to bring the, to the Android developer the best uh, to use tools to use. Uh, why Google are making the transition from Java to Kotlin? Uh, why Kotlin is the best choice right now? 
uh, we will talk about also uh, how Kotlin is safe, expressive, interoperable, and how good it is to working with the concurrent things. Uh, the speed of the development using uh, Kotlin, uh, so, so much uh, less to write, and the speed of the language. Uh, we will uh, cover also about the uh, many, how many, uh, how Google is writing the the, the new APIs uh, from Kotlin first. Uh, we will so we will so uh, cover about Android Jetpack and overview uh, about the patching tree, coordinating supporting from run, uh, work manage, and uh, over. Uh, about the, how distribution was with APK uh, and the new way of distribution apps. It's not just about APK anymore. And what app size affect the retention of the user. We also co cover about a uh, uh, review about uh, Apple bundles and how can we, uh, we can deliver uh, dynamic features with uh, app bundle and a, a little comparison about Epic Bundle and the, uh, the legacy APK. Basically, we will cover about all the foundation about the, the Android platform and the, the, the play. Uh, in this session, we, we will be with uh, Om, Omolara, and it will be on the August 6th, and I'm, I'm excited to be with you on this session. And now I'm back to you, Alela. Thank you so much, Manuel. Um, thank you so much to all our session speakers. So as we have all noted, they have given us a brief about what sessions they're going to be covering in the next seven weeks, in the next six weeks, sorry. And the thing is, I feel like it's broad, but then what is, I'm gonna ask this to the session speakers. Any of you can choose to answer this. A question from one of the audiences on Slido is, what is that? What feature that will make me transition to Android 11? What is that one additional thing added as compared to all the other versions? So why would I transition to Android 11? Okay, let me take this. Um, from my side, I would say the number one thing that would actually make me stick with Android 11 is privacy. Like we, are, we live in a world now where our user data is, is actually being sold off. Uh, we are literally the products. We are literally the products of some companies. And what Android 11 or what Google is trying to do with Android 11 is they're trying to put this uh, data, uh, they're trying to put you in charge of your data. Like uh, I'm sure uh, Omri will be talking about uh, Pernicus. Uh, uh, when you look at information, you can see that now, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Smile. I think also for me, privacy is quite um, really important because I'm looking at it, uh, now there's this one-time access whereby for every time you want to use something is when you're going to be granting access. But I'd like to get an opinion from anybody else because I'm gonna agree with Smile. For me, privacy is really key. Um, should I put someone on the, on the spotlight? Um, Lara, Omolara, since you have talked about privacy and your session is on privacy. So why is privacy <laughs> so important? <laughs> okay, so um, I mean, at one way, in one way or the other, every, almost everybody on this call uses an Android device. And then at least we can be users on our end as well as being, um, being developers. We know how we are weary when you see an app that's asks for permissions that you, okay, imagine you want to, um, so let's say you are trying to install an app that, that's, that reads a particular text and then the app is asking you for contact details or is asking you to know your location. I mean, imagine the shock that you would, or rather the, um, the curiosity that would, that would probably cross your mind to know why, why an app like that would want to read your, um, your location. So privacy is such a huge, um, such a huge part of our daily lives, especially even now that users are being more aware of how 
of what and, and, and how they can be more flexible about what they give um, apps um, opportunities to access. So uh, if, you, if you are that um, empathic developer that has your user's interest at us, I mean, you wouldn't want them to uninstall your app because you are asking for location for, for reasons that they don't even know about. Do you understand? So it's all, it's key to to make your app ready for this transition. Very light, uh, lighter version of using application that is on top of the privacy changes. That is, I think that's really important. There is also the increased performance of Android 11. So, which is really important, as Frank has just clearly stated to us. Um, anybody else with a hand, a smile, Manuel? What what is that one key feature that stands out for you? I think I'll take one answer before we go to the next question. I th I think uh, uh, the the other one is a UI. Uh, if you if you are an uh, Android application, so it's so interoperable. If he, if he, if he, if he, if he, they are a, a Java developer, it's so in, interoperable with with the Java because coaching run on GVM or also, and uh, it's safe. Because it it uses the 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 new safety and and the and the okay, thank you so much for that. Um, I think I'm going to put Tamre on the on the line uh, on the spotlight for this and Taracha. So if you were to pick, I think this is a question that many people ask, but now that now we're looking at Android 11 also, you've talked about performance. So why Kotlin? Uh, why, should, why should I, in particular, shift the focus from <laughs> Tamre, Taracha? One, do you want to go first or? the fact that you are going to be covering data access auditing. So why is it important and to what particular features is it going to apply? And I know you're going to know that I actually need. Uh, so let me throw this to Lara, or Molara, sorry. Am I the only one who's excited about wireless debugging or what are your thoughts on it? Oh, <laughs> obviously you're not the only one because even now, right now, I use my, I use the plugin to achieve that. So imagine bringing that, fe that feature native to Android Studio and your device, not having to look for cords, not having to, you know, carry wires up and down. In fact, even now that most developers now use um, MacBooks, right, where we have limited um, USB ports. So it's, it's like a win for everybody, you know, and not, you can decide to leave your cords at home and then go to work. I know that you should be able to achieve something. So it's a feature I'm really, really happy to have native to Android Studio because before I use um, ADB Wi-Fi plugin or something like that for my Android Studio, and now having it, it's like a win-win. <laughs> yeah, really, like, truth be told, it's a win-win. I'm like, I don't know how many times I've lost my cable. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm like, I'll just do it another time because my laptop may, might be a bit slow and I'm just thinking about having to turn on my emulator <laughs> and it's checking forever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for another day. Um, so before we were about to just finish up, uh, I'd like to just hand it now to the audience. In case you feel you have a question, just feel free to turn on your audio and then just ask your question. Um, anybody with a question now? Better. Because imagine you have a very, very large app where uh, let's say you have um, a part who would um, request for stuff. I mean, different, a very, very people would um, request for stuff. I mean, different, a very, a very, very complex and large application. It helps you modularize better. And now, imagine your users not needing all the modules of your app. So, for example, you are a user now, and then, um, and then you've been able to modularize uh, the parts, some parts of your app, right? And not all the all the features are necessary for all the users. So I usually like to make um use an example. Let's say WhatsApp. Some people are for are for WhatsApp status, and some people are, are against it. Like some people don't want it. So imagine it's it's a it's a feature where you can opt in. 
it, it, it makes your app lighter for your users to download because you can choose for um you can choose not, not to package that module with your entire APK or app bundle and then you can get it on demand. Do you get so it's dynamic such that um it's 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 it makes it user friendly for you in terms of size. The the size you're using that on board you know at installation is going to be really really light compared to having to module everything up into one big module so <clears throat> in terms of it i mean the pros outweighs the cons obviously so in terms of con i can't really think of anything apart from the fact that if your app is not is not complex right if it's not a complex app and if there's no need for you to actually segment your users based on what they would need then you can you can ignore it but if but for a large and uh, complex application especially where you want to handle segmentation. Let's say, for example, the pictures that will be available in Kenya is different from pictures that will be available in Nigeria. It's a good way to, so it's slightly coupled with um, on-demand features. So you can say, make this module available for users in Kenya and make this one available for users in Nigeria. So in fact, you can even, even go a step further to say, make it available for users using Android, Android as a of this version and not on i mean it makes you segment your users it makes you really build features for who needs them instead of I mean, bombarding your users with large app bundles that will need, that they might not even, they might not use up to half of it so the pros really outweighs the the cons if you ask me okay thank you so much omolara i hope it's on your question all answered uh we'll take a last question uh from the audience and then we just wrap up Anybody with a question? Sorry, we can't hear you. Can you just speak louder if you can? Uh, but nobody talking about uh, the security in, in Android uh, in Android 11. And I want and, and I would to be able to know what feature about uh, security in Android 11. Because um, the, but there are many, many people say that Android is not a, a security if we can compare it with uh, Apple. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to try to answer your question before I pass it back to the session speakers. Uh, okay. Personally, I believe uh, the security uh, bit has been covered under the privacy changes. Hannah and uh, Hannah and Omolara talked about because Anna Hannah talked about data access auditing and Omolara talked about the privacy changes that are going to be happening. But mm -hmm. in case they have anything they want to add on, so on the bit of security, please do join the two the, the three sessions and just you'll get an understanding better. Hannah, do you want to answer his question? Uh, um, I think maybe he he would be he. He's asking in comparison with um, Apple. So maybe yeah. you can just give an example so that we know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, over to you. Um, he's on mute. Okay. He's still on mute. Um, I think we can, we can just get one last question. I know I've been saying the one last question, but we can just get one last question again and then we proceed, we finalize it. Any questions from the audience? Um, if, if I may respond to the other question on security before we end. Um, yes. Um, this, 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 this is what I, oh. I can see man is back, but before man goes, totally different systems. The Android system is more open and uh, for, the, for the past couple of years has been more open than the iOS system, right? Because the iOS system is very closed and um, when it comes even to developer tools and the developer community, you can't compare to Android, which is more open. and. As a result of it being open, uh, you might find vulnerabilities in security or security enforcement wasn't top of mind for Android. But as we've come over the years, and as you can see in Android 11, um, they're pivoting more towards privacy, especially. 
the way the two systems were structured initially, but Android is becoming more privacy and especially user privacy centric. Yeah, so. Thank you so much, Taracha. Uh, Man, I hope your question was answered. Um, I believe the explanation has been quite clear on the security bit. Oh, sorry. And it's, it's yes, <laughs> sorry. No, 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 just go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> There's something I've seen in the, in the chat section on our okay. dynamic feature module. Okay, just, sure, just do um, that. And so I think, like, Eton, you know, like most of the time when people talk about RA, um, they're talking about optimization of the applications, right? And so one, one of the things is it's an issue tracker, yes, but then there's usually a work around that. Um, and, and there are all these like, conditions that you need to meet. Um, I can look for an article, I think, by one of the Google engineers who wrote around working through all those things. Um, but I think, like, if my memory serves me right, um, I've ever used it. And I think the thing that you had to do was you have to... Uh, you must not call any methods that uh, that are returned on the on the service loader you get uh, other than the iterator. So you can call every other thing, but then any other method that is called that is returned on the service loader, you you must not call them. Um, and then I think the other one is uh, you 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 have to do like um, you must call like the two argument versions of load. So so if you if you probably used uh, dynamic uh, uh, feature modules, you'll know that the that bit for the load bit. And so you must call those two arguments, those versions of them there. I'm going to actually send you that that link of that of that tutorial. Mm -hmm. I forget what the third one is, um, but I think if my memory serves me right, it's something to do with uh, the 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 arguments must use class constant, uh, constants. And so if you know what class constants are, if you look at, um, I think in Java you have to use like your your double columns and then your class with Java. And then like, if you're in Java, I think it's like, dot. and so there's that workaround. It was actually posted after this issue tracker was there. Cause I remember using this sometime uh, late last year or early this year. Um, and so I know it actually works when you use R8 because what, 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 what happened was, I think it's not been just implemented inside the main one, but there's actually a workaround for, for, for this. Okay. Let me start for the Thank you so much. I'll probably send it to you later. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Tamre. Uh, Omolara has posted um, a link to a, a talk that she gave. For those who want to check it out, just go to the chat segment, you'll find it. I'm going to wrap up this by thanking our session speakers for joining us today. It was really insightful. I think we've all gathered a lot of things that we want to know in the next six weeks about Android 11. The sessions are going to be every Thursday, uh, starting next week, Thursday, which is 2nd of July to 6th of August. And for next week's sessions, we will be having Frank Tamre, and the session will be moderated by Alan Juma. Uh, we hope to see you there. In case you have any feedback that you feel you want to share with us, I've posted a link to the feedback uh, segment. Just add, add your feedback there. If, in case you still have questions, the link for Slido is still going to be open for everyone else. Thank you so much for joining us and do have a great day. Yeah. Thank you, our session speakers. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>